Jeff, what was the most pleasing thing about the uh, the comeback win during the week? Um, probably just the character I think the players showed because um, I mean, you're behind in any game, you need to show that. But particularly at home, there's an expectation upon us from fans. Then when the performance isn't going to or isn't meeting that expectation, then the atmosphere changes within the stadium. It happens in stadiums all across the country. So you have to be brave as a player to then deal with the criticism and then respond in the manner they did. So um, character, but also the level of performance that produced second half as well. Did you have to get a response out of them after the, the way the first half had gone? Well, we have to in order to win the game because if we had played in the same manner and at the same level as we'd done in the first half, then we wouldn't have got anything from the match because we deservedly were behind at half time. Um, and in the main, I've repeated myself quite a lot with it, but in the main, I've been I've been happy with what the players have given me since I came to the club. And um, it was the first time that I, I really felt as if we'd dropped below. We did a couple of disappointing halves or games here and there, but that was way below where we needed to be at. But the response was excellent. So I think it's a case of putting much more emphasis and focus on the response rather than the bit before that. Um, let's go to Motherwell this weekend. They're going to need 90 minutes of that, and then the way the Motherwell have been, have been playing. Yeah, um, it's um, a team that's enjoyed not just a, a good season this year, but last season as well. Um, they've, they've deserved and received a lot of plaudits. Um, although, interestingly, last 10 games, I think, we're only two points behind them in the form table. So that is, um, we've reminded the players of that. You know, we've, over the last 10 matches, are a good side and we've shown that. So it's about taking that confidence, but equally being aware that we need to be um, repeat second half performance through the course of the whole game, as you said, to win the match. How, just how tricky a league is this? I mean, Motherwell have shown a bit of consistency where you mm. can get to, but it feels like on any given day any team could beat another team. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I mean, I've, as I've seen that first hand now, I think, we've, I think I've played, with the exception of St Johnston, I think I've came up against every single team, and um, there is little to separate the vast majority. Midweek card shows that, I think, with the exception of Celtic's victory at Command, I think they were all one goal margins the games that were, that, were, that were won and lost and that reflects how tight the league is so um, it's just trying to make sure that you have enough about you to come out the right side of the results and I think for us we know we can do the good side of that and play well it's making sure that we don't play so well that we dig out wins and, and maybe Wednesday was a good example of that. There's maybe a couple more things you'd like to do in the transfer market, is that more difficult with the, the amount of fixtures that you're playing at the moment? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's challenging just in terms of the juggling all your um, your trains of thoughts, etc. Unfortunately, we've got good support at the club here, so um, a lot of that gets taken away from me. Um, I suppose the one area that, that maybe managers in, in the Premiership would, would, would nod towards is if you are looking at any players. So in this window, if there are free agents that you want to have a look at, we're hardly training. I mean, we're on the grass, but we're not doing a huge amount when we're out there. So that's the only challenge is maybe the number of fixtures means that if you were looking to assess players in training, it becomes more challenging than it would be when you're only playing Saturday to Saturday. Are you, com Sorry, are you confident that you can hold on to Martin Boyle? Yeah, from my point of view, football point of view, absolutely, because there's no, I've said this, there's no desire from you whatsoever to, to entertain any offers that would potentially could come for him. Um, I think the players are more than happy here and content and everything I've heard from the club is that we're in a good position that way as well. So there's nothing that points to that being the case. However, I've, I've been at clubs before where that has changed and it, and it changes quite quickly. So, um, you know, I'm quite relaxed about it because as things stand, he's my part of my squad and he'll continue to be part of my squad, I would imagine, for the rest of the season at least. The injury situation was causing you concern when we were last year. Are you feeling a lot more confident since then? Um, no, I mean, I, I was. I think once we had clarity on and confirmation of the extent of Ryan and um, Jason's injuries, it, it meant that we know exactly what we need to do over the the, the remainder of the window while it, it's open. Um, and so that's that's not changed. We still need um, a defensive reinforcement in of some sort, and we're working towards that because um, we've went from being comfortable defensively to being quite stretched and. and we have obviously a couple amongst that, Dave and, and Darren, who've, who've had their injury issues this season as well. So, look, I've been delighted with the response I had with the players on, on, on Wednesday defensively and then around the training ground, but just from a numbers perspective, we could do with a couple more bodies in. The headline this morning said that Hibs would look for one and a half million for Boyle. Would they make of that being out there? I'm um, not sure where it came from, um, 
but no, certainly I've never had a conversation about putting a value on Martin. I don't, I don't think the club has, as far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's there is a lot of speculation that um, gathers momentum quite quickly. Uh, how much of it is true and how much of it is just um, it's whispers that, that, that grow arms and legs. I don't know, but certainly I don't think there's anything that's came from us as a club. How important is he to you? Obviously, he's, he's won the Player of the Month. He's mm. set up another couple of goals there, and, and, and on field, he's kind of speaking for himself. But is he important off the field as well? You know, he's, he seems to be a, a character. He seems to be someone who he gives the, the team a lot of personality. Yeah, he, um, for us, he's he's all round contribution to the club. Is brilliant. The on field stuff is the thing that's the most determining one, but he's. Um, he brings an energy every single day, relentlessly. Um, fortunately, as a manager, I, I get to spend less time with him than the rest of the players do. So, um, for me, it's a good thing. You'd have to ask the rest of the playing squad how they find him. But no, he's, he's a hugely popular member of the group because he, because of that consistency of his mood. Um, you know, be players and coaches and staff. We work in an industry that isn't um, is an emotional roller coaster and, and goes up and down three times a week usually in terms of results and. The one thing you get from him is the same mood every single day, and he brings an enthusiasm and a and and um, an exuberance to the training ground that you need.